Welcome to Uxbridge Scugog Live. This is a brand new show that's just for you and your community. Now, what I wanted to share is the other day I was down in Port Perry. Now, I love the downtown core of Uxbridge and Port Perry. Port Perry, it just has this feel that I love. And you know what? Even though the stores are all closed, or the majority of them were closed or curbside pickup. It, it was very quiet. It still has that wonderful feel that it, it uplifts me. And I went down to the water and this time of year going down to the water is just so nice. You know when it gets really hot, there's more algae in the water. It has more of a heaviness in the air, but right now that's not happening. It's, uh, it's just such a gem of a location. So if you haven't been down to Port Perry lately, go down, check out the water. You know, walk by the parks and see the boat club and all that. It's it's just such a treat. Now, today, on today's show, we have Julia Baker talking to us from Forest, a new dispensary in town. We also have Ron Houston talking about homelessness in Durham. It is real and it is happening right in Durham. And we have Dan Poller from 105.5. It's going to be a great show. So make sure you keep on watching. We'll be right back with Uxbridge Scugog Life. program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. Are you a woman experiencing abuse? Do you know a woman experiencing abuse? Help is available any time of day or night. Sheltersafe.ca is an online map that helps you find a women's shelter or transition house that meets your needs so you can live a life free from violence. Sheltersafe.ca. Help is just a click away. I'm Eric Marchinos of Cinema Scene and Review. Join me for a monthly movie roundup of new releases either in theaters or available to stream. See you next time in review. Welcome back to Oxford Scugog Life. Now, right now on the show, I have Julia Baker, who is the spokesperson for Forest, which is a new dispensary that has opened up in Oxbridge. So welcome to the show, Julia. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Good. Well, I'm, I'm really excited to have you on the show because I want to find out more about Forest. Now, I understand that Forest is a family-run business. How did they decide to get into selling cannabis and, and accessories in the first place? Well, the family has been advocates for the plant basically their whole life, and they've been recognizing the value and benefits for a really long time. And when the opportunity came along to turn it into a brand among the forest and the trails of Uxbridge, so it really just kind of goes hand in hand, honestly. Like, they have an amazing respect for people. Their customer service is amazing. They're wonderful people to work for. I honest, I couldn't ask for a better job. Oh, that's amazing. So you, you're not only their spokesperson, but you also, you work within the store too? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, great. So that's where the name comes from, Forest, because of the, we're the trail capital of Canada. I did not know that. Yeah, um, well, living in Uxbridge and being in the green belt offers a great opportunity to live surrounded by forests and trails. We appreciate the importance of the feature and of the community and the spin of the spelling. The forest took a lot of creative and unique considerations. We, they didn't want, they wanted to be unique. It was all about being unique and this is a fun creative spin on the regular way to spell forest. Cool, yeah, I, I really like it. 
Now, I understand that part of their mission is to uplift the community. What are some things that they've done or they're planning on doing? I know with the pandemic, they, they haven't been doing, I'm sure, all that they want to do. But mm -hmm. what are their intentions for uplifting the community? Um, our mission at The Forest is to uplift the communities we operate in and to remain true to the mission we have ensured that we have maximized our commitment to Uxbridge by doing everything locally from leasing our location in the heart of Uxbridge and printing and accounting uniforms and employing local people to work in our store. Our future, future plans are to continue our commitment to the community. Um, so like a lot of everything like we all want it to be locally based like that is their main goal and what is true to their heart and they believe what is the best honestly like I like that everything is local I believe in supporting local businesses so I really like that yeah I think that's amazing and uh, what is what is one thing that Forest really prides themselves in doing? Um, our vision is to provide and authenticate legal pr products and our members with an emphasis on staff training and exponential customer service. Our customers and community are very important to us. Everyone, everyone is our town, knows each other and as such, and we are all friends and family. Like, we have local people because we know the locals like I've I lived here since I was in grade eight like I've been to school here locally the only time I've really been away before I moved here was to go to college and then I I came right back like I even moved out of my parents house but I stayed in the same town because it's such a locally and like a building community and that's what they want to emphasize and that's why the customer service is so great we treat everyone like family I have been into your store a few times myself, and any time I go there, I feel so welcomed. Everyone has a smile on their face. Everyone, I feel like everyone is just like my best friend when I walk in there. It's a really, really nice feeling. I really like it. Yeah. Now, with you working there, what would you say Forrest is doing to help the employees to stay optimistic during the pandemic? Um, we get to we continue to follow like the COVID restrictions and this the procedures to ensure the employees and customers are safe. As we continue to operate for curbside pickup, we continue to take care for each other, support each other and our community, and keep a positive attitude at all times. Like we make sure like everyone is six feet apart. Like before the store went back to curbside pickup, everyone had to be ID'd at the front. And then every, like we had the circles on the floor, everyone was safe. And even outside, we still take those precautions because you never want to be too careful, right? Like you still have to wear your mask outside. You still have to be six feet apart and like you just have to be respectful, right? And that is what we do. We encourage people to be safe because we want to go back into work. Like it's such an awesome place to work that we want to be safe, that we want to encourage everyone to be safe so that we can go back and work at the job that we love. You know, when I went into the store and I was ID'd for the mm -hmm. first time, I thought, oh, yes, I'm being carded again. It's been years. <laughs> I was yeah. so excited. And then when I asked, I'm like, are you IDing everyone? And they're like, oh, no, just the ones that look so young. <laughs> <laughs> But now I know. Now I know that everyone's saying, I, darn. <laughs> Anyways, Julie, it still made me feel good. And um, I feel good every time I go into your store. And I also feel good after going into your store. <laughs> Anyways, Julia, thank you so much uh, for coming on to the show. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. We will be right back with more Uxbridge Scugog Life in just a moment. Hi. 
Hey, welcome to Cooking with Corey. I'm your host, Corey Dern, and with me is the fabulous Grant Peckford, Catherine Seaton, Ted Rowney, the lovely Lisa Lace, Nellie Peterson, Sasha Sudat, Jason Poulter. So what are we making? Have you ever looked at a recipe and thought, oh, I'm not quite sure how to do this, or not really understood the technique behind why you're doing it this way? Then my show is the show for you. That is exactly what you were looking for. The best thing about this is you're actually treating the tofu as somebody who would treat a steak. Where's the salt and the tequila that goes with it? <laughs> Wait, is that, is that a different show? Maybe. That's drinking with Corey. <laughs> You're yummy. Thank you so much for being on the show. I love it. Thanks for teaching me how to cut. Welcome back to Oxford Scugog Live. With me now on the show is Ron Houston, who is the chairman of North House. Welcome to the show, Ron. Thanks for having me, Jackie. Yeah, well, thank you for thank you for being on the show. Homelessness is such an important topic. I used to work for an, um, an organization that helped uh, teens in crisis, and there is such a huge stigma when it comes uh, when when people think about homelessness, right? They, I, I'm sure you get this all the time when they think about homelessness. They think about downtown downtown Toronto people uh, living on. Uh, subway grades and panhandling, but it can look very different than that. Do you want to explain how homelessness actually can look within Durham? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, I work downtown Toronto, so so I've seen the same thing as you mentioned, um, people on the streets, and, and that's typically what comes to mind when people think about homelessness and, and people suffering from that. Um, but as I've moved up further, further, and further north, uh, up into Uxbridge and Sunderland now, um, what we see here is it's actually more of a hidden problem. So, you know, sometimes that, that means it's, it's couch surfing. So someone doesn't have a, you know, an official house to live in. They're sort of helping, getting help from their friends and their family. Um, it's also people that are living hard. You know, they might be living out in, in the woods or, or out somewhere in a tent um, that you wouldn't see as you would in downtown Toronto. So, I think we're, we're seeing some of that, which, which other people don't see, but as I've gotten involved with this organization, North House, um, that's been explained to me, and, and th those are the types of people that we, we serve. Right, and people that are having to couch surf, um, some of those friendships can end up crumbling as well, right? Going from place to place and uh, not being able to, I guess, overstaying your welcome and things like that. So North House is so incredibly important. Now, you not only help people find housing, you also have other services you provide. Do you want to go over uh, the different services that you have available? Yeah, I think we try and provide a, a, a multitude of services to people that come in, and each person that we deal with is different. They're, they're suffering from different things or have different challenges. So um, we do things from a Housing First program that we started, which um, which isn't new to, to anyone, but it's sort of getting people housed first and then dealing with any issues that they might face aside from that, you know, mental challenges or addiction or things like that. Um, we also help with ID replacement. Um, we help deal with if they're having landlord tenant disagreements. Um, there's tax, we do tax clinics every year to help people file their taxes and, and typically they're getting refunds. So that's a big source of income for them. Um, and there's other programs like low income energy assistance like LEAP and uh, Ontario Electricity Support Program, um, the OESP and, and help people do that with, uh, with our help so that they can actually get some money and support for, from that side of things. Oh, that's wonderful. Now, I understand you also do fundraisers. With the pandemic, I'm sure things have shifted for you. But what are your typical fundraisers? And you have, can you even make plans for the near future about um, how you're going to, how you're going to raise money for the programs that you have? Yeah, COVID has certainly changed things. I think one of our biggest fundraisers in the past has, has been Hope for Homes, which was a basically a dinner gala with silent auction and speakers that we had a couple of years ago it was actually our first annual um obviously last year we couldn't do that and i don't think we're going to be able to do it again this year so 
we're looking forward to, to maybe 2022 is to getting that one back. Um, we just had our coldest night of the year, which is a, a walk we had to do virtually this year, but was very successful. Um, lots of people walked uh, on behalf of the organization and raised a, a lot of money for us. So we raised uh, about $38,000, which was incredible. Oh, wow. um, and then we do, we're going to have to do some smaller events where we're talking about doing a cookbook and, and we do uh, do readings at Christmas time um, sometimes. Um, but uh, a lot of the support doesn't, you know, we don't need to run fundraisers. We would ask people that can donate, you know, to, re to reach out to us at northhouse.ca and, and donate to help us out there. Okay, that's brilliant. So they can donate it on your website. Do you need any other support from the community? Yeah, I think going forward, we're going to look for volunteers. I mean, that's usually the, the basis of any organization, you know, from a nonprofit perspective is that we can always use some help. Um, we have a great board and a great staff at North House, so we do some great things there, but it always helps when you have um, some people that can lend an hour or two or, you know, bring some expertise to the table to help us with uh, fundraising activities or, or things like that. So if people are interested in getting involved, they can certainly um, look on the website to, and reach out to us and, and we'll, we'll, let, we'll get back to them to let them know what they could do. Ron, we have less than a minute left, but would you mind sharing something that you're in such gratitude for to work for an organization such as North House? I think it's the staff, um, to be honest. I've, I have learned a lot. So this, I've only been with the organization for two years. So um, I have learned a lot in a very short short time, but um, homelessness um, is, a, is a big problem. Um, our vision is to obviously eradicate homelessness in North Durham and for those people that we support across Scugog, Uxbridge and, and Brock County or Brock Township. Um, but the staff doing this work through COVID, um, reaching out to people, trying to help um, has been inspirational for me just to watch that we're really helping people in need. Ron, thank you so much for all that you do. Make sure you check out their website. You can make a donation today. Uh, much more coming up on Oxford Scugog Life. We'll be right back. back in studio for season two of The Social Life at a Distance. We're your hosts, I'm Ksenia Spach, and I'm Stephanie Lerrero, and we are so happy to be bringing you guys the latest trending news. We want you to be in the know. What's happening in the world of sports? What's happening in the world of entertainment? What stories are trending online? We're gonna bring all that content to you and much more right here on Rogers, Rogers TV. TV. Welcome back to Oxford Scugog Life. I am so excited for our next guest. I hope you listen to 105.5 Hits FM. If you don't, you should be, because today on the show, I have Dan Pollard. And uh, Dan is the morning show host. He's also the general manager. And he is also, he grew up in Uxbridge. I did not know that until oh. I was prepping for the show. So cool. Yeah. Dan, how are you? I'm, I'm really well. The fun part is when I go into the high school and you speak and you go, by the way, I went to this high school and they went, what? Um, <laughs> because, I mean, my, my career's taken me all over the place. And the, the coolest thing is to be able to come back to my hometown to, to take everything I've learned. You know, I did the Olympics uh, for CBC. I was in Athens for a month. Uh, I've done the Pan Am Games. I don't know how many Olympic Games now. Worked at TSN, Sportsnet, but I'm home. And uh, to be able to do media here is the coolest part. Oh, it's so great. Now, I understand you haven't been on TV for a little while. How is it to have your your mug on the screen again? Yeah, I know. I had to actually, uh, like, shower. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it, it, you know what? People out there understand this because of the pandemic, too. Oh, I got to shower, you know. 
Uh, although Zoom calls, I guess, change things around for people because now they're uh, they're doing that rather than going into work. But um, yeah, no, it's cool. And that was a transition. The funny thing is when I went to college, I wanted to get into television, first thing. And then I found the magic of radio where uh, it's theater of the mind. And this is kind of cool. And I went the radio route. My first job was in Lindsay. And I went from there and I was a 21 year old at Q107. Um, my second job overall. And I stayed in radio until later on, somebody I went to school with said, there's a job at global television. Do you think, oh, I don't know about television. And uh, we went out, did a shoot, and I ended up working at global television and the fan and, uh, and then made a transition and then did both at CBC. I was at, in radio and television before I came here. Oh, wow. your resume is huge. That yeah. is a good... Yeah, and I haven't been fired, so, well, yeah. let, <laughs> Downsized. You have not some wood. <laughs> Down, well, and actually, I shouldn't say that. I was downsized once. The second time I learned the lesson when I was at the NHL Network is uh, Gary Bettman's a very powerful person, and you really should be careful when you're interviewing him because um, he's a very powerful person. So I'll leave it at that just to say uh, I learned my lesson. Okay. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe after the taping of this, you can give me a little bit more dirt. So uh, what would you say is the most fun about your job right now at the radio station? What do you love? It is that fact that I'm back home uh, okay. and you can, you can have a real effect when there's a charity, when there's an event and you can say something to someone and, and all of a sudden the crowd grows because people, Oh, we heard it on the radio and they, they came out to see the event and you've helped that charity uh, because you're, you're grassroots, you're right on the ground, um, as opposed to some of the bigger organizations where you're helping out a lot of people, but you don't necessarily know them either. So, uh, you know, you know you're helping out a family or, or someone you, you might know or have gone to school with. Uh, that, that's the coolest part for me, and that's the most exciting in getting up in the morning. And honestly, it provides me with, and, and you, you understand this because you understand energies, this... <laughs> gives me the power, the positive energy. When you get up in the morning and you're looking at your, your toes and, and then you go, oh yeah, I'm going to go on the radio. Yeah. Boom. And to be able to do that and entertain people locally is the coolest. It's the best. It is the best. Okay. Do you, what is your fondest memory of being a teen in Uxbridge? Uh, <laughs> I said this to somebody I was, I was driving the other day. I went, I know that side road. I know that uh, that farmer's field, da, 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 because everybody knew everybody. Um, and the thing is, when I was growing up, yes, we, we did like to, to um, have fun, but it was respectful <laughs> fun. It wasn't any damage or anything like that. But we knew farmer's fields where you could drive through the corn and things like that. Um, and and for friends who were full-time farmers. And I remember in uh, going to school at, at Seneca College and people, you know, I talk about a friend who's a farmer and they say, yeah, well, what else do they do? No, they're a farmer. They didn't get that because they were from the city. And I said, that's how we grew up. And everybody kind of knew each other. My mom was uh, the treasurer or president of the fair board for 15 to 17 years. Oh. I grew up as a kid. The fair started not on the Friday. Fair started for me on Tuesday when all the equipment pulled in. And I went out and uh, helped put in the stakes and put up the fencing and those kinds of things. Oh. So uh, that, those are the, the memories I remember. And now to see my kids be friends with guys and uh, women and men that I went to school with. That is why. That, yeah. Okay, we, we don't have a lot of time left, but would you mind telling me what are your three favorite things about Oxford and Scugog? Oh, uh, well, number one by far is um, just the ability to get out there with the charities and as volunteering. I hope that is something that never gets lost because it's huge in Uxbridge. And you see people rally when, when there's situations where people need help, then, you know, that's, uh, that's you know, and that maybe that's one, two, and three. Okay, okay, that's great. Dan, I wish we had more time. It's been so fantastic having you on the show. I could talk to you all day. Actually, I want to listen to you all day, which I can. Oh, yes, you can. Yes. Well, it's, it's great having been had. So but thank you. Awesome. Well, we will definitely, we'll have to have you on the show again sometime. Thank you so much. We will be right back with more on Oxford Scugog Life.
I joined because I wanted to help others. To be a part of something bigger. To show my kids what's important. I joined to make my community stronger. To make a difference in someone's life. To acknowledge that our freedoms come at a cost. I joined to honor my mom. My grandpa. My neighbor. Everyone who served. Who are serving still. I joined. I joined. I joined the Legion. Hi, I'm Scott Clark, host of Our Historic Home Durham. We hope you join us as we explore the historic sites, people, and places that our region has to offer. That's Our Historic Home Durham, here only on Rogers TV. Well, that's a wrap of another Uxbridge Scugog live show. Thank you so much for watching and special thanks to our guests. We had Julia Baker from Forest. We also had Dan Pollard from 105.5 FM, or Hits FM. And then we also had Ron Houston talking about homelessness in Durham, which is definitely a real problem that we need to open up our eyes to and you know what I used to as I said on the show I used to work for an organization that helped youth in crisis and we helped youth to find a safe place to stay and what I found was so surprising is that if you were in um in let's say a high school classroom looking around there could be at least one kid in there who was homeless and you wouldn't be able to tell the difference maybe either than their their head down on the desk so just increase your awareness about that and see how you can offer some assistance to be able to help with that now dan pollard uh, talking to him was so fabulous and i can't believe how much he's actually volunteered within the community as well so volunteered at the expert cottage hospital president of the minor hockey association volunteer at the Uxbridge fair board and also a member of the men who care so how can we get more involved with the community keep your eyes open and especially right now with um, with the pandemic there's more assistance that is needed in certain areas but do what you feel safe with so again thank you so much for watching Oxford School of Life and if you want to be on the show definitely contact us send me an email and we, we can get you on the show we'd love to help spread the word about what is going on uh, within your business within w events programs things like that or anything you want to educate the community on so again thank you for watching Uxbridge Scugog Life we will see you next week the Rogers TV viewer response line. Email us or connect with us on social media. Coffee in the morning may seem like the only choice, but is it really? Caffeine found in the coffee bean does block the drowsy causing effect of chemicals, but that can only last for so long before we crash. The honey and tea way of getting out of bed is reaching for a cup of superfood matcha green tea. Unlike most teas, matcha powder uses the whole leaf and contains the plant energy of chlorophyll. One